Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Gladys Assistant on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, you're installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So... Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what will be installed today, Gladys Assistant on Portainer. Um, it's to craft your perfect smart home experience. This is what it looks like. It's got a nice UI to it. Um, some cool features, build great dashboards, and then automate your life with scenes. And then always one message away, and it does have integration with ChatGPT as well, right here. Um, so I, here's the capabilities built in. And then the most intuitive smart home software, pri privacy friendly, uh, easy to use, clean UI, stable, fast, auto upgrades. So that's what we'll be installing today. So I'm going to start on a Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to um, go, uh, go up here to the search, type Gladys, and then I'm going to click the Portainer version. And then now I'm going to go into Docker Compose. So version 3 of Docker Compose is being used, the, the file format. And then I'm going to set services, and then the first service underneath services is called Gladys. The image is coming off Docker Hub by default because there's no URL before this. This is the Docker image, and then this is the Docker image tag. Um, restart always means that if you uh, stop it or any other reason, then it'll always restart. Um, I'm going to give it privileged is true, and then network mode is host. Um, this is required according to Gladys. So... Um, and container names can, uh, going to be called Big Bear Gladys. And then the C group is host. The environment variables are set. So the node ENV is production, the SQLite file pa path right here. And this is a file path on the container side. Um, so the, the, the time zone, and then I would set this to your time zone. The server port of the UI is 1080. And then volumes are right here. A var run docker dot sock is on the host side and then on the container side is the same path var run docker dot sock and then this gives access uh, for the container to interact with the docker engine Gl gladys uh, data right here is a local volume that's de uh, defined down here um on the container side is var lib gladys assistant same as up here so that's where the db is living um, so, uh, dev, dev, so the left is on the host, the right is on the container, and then run eodev is on the host, and run eodev is on the, uh, container side. The left side is the host, the right side is the container. Um, the network mode up here is host, so it's using the host, uh, networking to go, so that means that you don't need to, uh, to have any ports set because they're already set and running on the host network. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy raw file, and then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this set up and installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local and then stacks and then add stack up here. And then I'm going to give it a name of Gladys um, stack. And um, a portainer stacks underneath are using the Docker comp uh, Compose and I it's using the Docker engine. So um, now I'm going to scroll down to Web Editor. I'm going to paste in the Docker Compose right here. And once you do that, you're going to come down here to deploy the stack. You're going to click it, and then it's going to be successfully installed and running. So now I'm going to go over the stack options. So if you go into your Gladys stack right here, 
I, I, you'll see uh, the stack, which gives you actions to stop the stack, delete the stack, create temper from the stack, stack duplication slash mi migration. And then you see your containers down here and the access control. You can go in the editor right here and you can edit the Docker Compose. And then you can come down here and update the stack. Now, repull image and redeploy means that it'll repull the image off the registry, get it extracted, and redeploy it uh, with Docker. So, you, you can sh uh, check mark this or uncheck it and then press the update. Um, so, that's a little bit about the stack options in Portainer. So, I'm going to start on my stack again. I'm going to go down to container and click it. And then you'll have actions up here of start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, slash, edit. And this is used in Docker underneath. Um, so you have all these actions. Um, cont container status of uh, runtime and uh, logs, inspect, stats, uh, console, and attach. Uh, you can go into lo logs, and this is great for debugging. Um, so you have your access control, you can create an image, and then you can go down here, container details, and you can see the image. You can say the command and the entry point, uh, the environment variables, and then the labels. You can also change the restart policy, and then you can press update if you, ch if you change it over here. Um, you can come down here and see all your volumes that you have, and you can see it's a local volume and it's clickable. Um, and it is running on the host, the host network. So that's a little bit about the container options in Portainer. So now I'm going to go to the UI. So you're going to put your Portainer's IP address in, and then the port is 1080. So I'm going to go to it, and now you get a welcome from Gladys, and then I'm going to create a local account. I'm going to put a first name and a last name and an email. And then I'm going to put a password, and it does need to be a minimum of eight characters long. And then now, I think I got everything, so I'm going to cr create an account. So now the temperature unit, you can set to your temperature unit and your distance unit. And you can also uh, set the, uh, the device state history, how long it's kept. And now you can put your home on the map. You can also name your home and then um, put a room in. So now we've named the, uh, the home and then we've put a room in. So I'm gonna save the house. And uh, now it's a thank you from the author. So I'm gonna go, go to the ba uh, dashboard. So now you can see that you can create your own dashboard now going to go ahead and go to the first dashboard so now you can go into here and then um, I'm gonna do a clock and then digital and then you can show seconds now when you have more uh, s stuff in here you can move it to column to column to column and um, I'm gonna just I'll leave it in column two then you uh, press save down here so now you can see it's done you can go ahead and edit again and you can move it over column one and then now it's moved over. You can also pick between the dashboards if you have multiples. Um, you can see the tower mode. You can go full screen and then uh, you can edit. Um, so I'm gonna go to chat now. So now you can say what's the weather. And then now you will need an open weather API. So you can go over to integrations and you can uh, put your integrations in. Um, you can also uh, set up with ChatGPT. And you can see a calendar uh, now. You can go to the map and see your home. You can create a new zone. You can also create a scene. You can go up here to your profile. You can change some settings and you can change your password. You can go into settings right here and then you can change your home's name. You can uh, add rooms, an alarm code. You can also go into users. You can add a new user. You can see your sessions, plus and backups and the task. 
and ser uh, services. You can see system, so connected, disk, uptime, aversion. And you can see the containers, um, uh, the database cleaning right here. And the device state history, you can change it from here. So, that's a little bit about Gladys Assistant in the UI. So I just went over everything to get you started with Gladys Assistant on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.